Welcome to Hananiga High School. I'm Brian Brown, and today we'll be looking at our fourth part of notes from Chapter 4, dealing with balancing redox reactions. In order to do this, you have to be familiar with what we looked at in the last set of notes, which is understanding whether, whether a reaction has been oxidized or reduced and assigning oxidation numbers. And we're going to use what's known as the half reaction method. Now, this method involves treating on paper only the oxidation and reduction reactions as two separate processes. And you balance these independent of each other. And then at the end, you combine them back together to attain the overall balanced equation for the overall reaction. Now, first, in order to do that, we're going to assign oxidation numbers to determine what is oxidized and what's reduced. Because you're probably going to see the, you know, a form of the overall reaction that's not balanced. And the first thing you're going to need to do is determine what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So we can split into what are called the half reactions. But to do that, we have to assign oxidation numbers. Second, we're going to write the oxidation and reduction half reactions from that. Remember, if the oxidation number is going down, that's your reduction. If the oxidation number is going up, that's your oxidation. From there, we're going to balance each half reaction. And to do that, we're going to go through a series of steps. First, we're going to balance everything but H's and O's. You'll see why we save those in a second. Then we're going to balance the O's by adding water. And that means to balance the H's, we need to account for that by adding something else. We're going to balance that by adding H+, which means we're technically looking at these reactions in an acidic environment here. And then finally, at this point, we're going to balance the charge by adding electrons. Once we've got the non-oxygens and hydrogens, oxygens and hydrogens balanced in this method, at this point, we can do an evaluation of charge to determine where electrons are at and whether they're being uh, added or removed in the reaction. Now next, we're going to multiply the half reactions so that the electron transfer is equal. So once we know how many electrons are being transferred in the half reaction, one reaction provides the electrons for the other. So there has to be a balance between the two reactions. And then once we've done that, we combine the half reactions and subtract things that appear on both sides, and we'll be left with a balanced half reaction. And when you go and do that, things will appear that weren't there in the original reaction. You'll see waters and H pluses that are appearing that weren't there originally. Now, before you finish, don't just get to the end and then stop. You need to make sure the equation is balanced both by mass and by charge, because it's easy to make a simple mistake. And if you look at, are my atoms of each element balanced? And is my charge balanced? You can catch if you made a simple mistake. So remember, your equation has to be balanced both by mass and by charge. And that's really what we're doing is we're coming up with a method, method to try and find out how many electrons were transferred. Because that's much, much, much harder to see and account for charge as well as mass balancing. Now, here is a half reaction between MnO4, which is the permanganate anion, and Fe2+, which is the iron 2 ion. Now, if you take a look at this reaction, it looks like there's no way to balance it. I mean, we have O's on the left. We have no O's on the right. There have to be things missing. Well, using this method, you'll be figuring out what's, uh, what's missing. But we do know we have MnO4 involved, and we have iron involved. And we know we end up making Mn2 plus and Fe3 plus. So this is really enough information for us to figure out what's going on. So we're going to balance this reaction. Now, first we've got to assign oxidation numbers so we can split into the correct oxidation and reduction half reaction. So first, we look at what's going on with MnO4. Remember, we did this yesterday. Oxygen is always a negative 2, so we know the O is a negative 2. And that allows us to determine that the Mn has to be a positive 7. Because in order for this to add up, MnO4 has to add up to its charge. So 7 plus negative 8 would equal negative 1. So I know Mn is a plus 7 to start with. All the rest, their charge is going to equal the oxidation number, so those are easy. Now, at this point, you can see that manganese goes from plus 7 to plus 2, so it's being reduced. That's the reduction half reaction, MnO4 minus becoming Mn2 plus. And iron is going from plus 2 to plus 3, so that's being oxidized. Now, we're going to balance each half reaction in following the four steps that we talked about briefly earlier. So first, we're going to balance all elements besides H and O. Well, all I've got are Fe's, and I have one of each. So that's taken care of. I don't need to balance my O's by adding any waters. That's taken care of. I don't need to balance my H's by adding H pluses because they don't have any. So all that really leaves is we need to balance the charge by adding electrons. So since everything is balanced except the charge, we're going to add an electron to the right. 
remember, by adding electrons, because that's what we're looking at, what you're doing is reducing charge on that side. So the only way to get this to balance is if we had one electron on the right. Then we have a positive two total charge on each side. It's charged or balanced by charge. So you're going to add electrons to the more positive side, and you add enough electrons to bring the charges down to the other side. Now we do the same thing for MnO4. Now first we balance the non-H's and O's. Well, Mn's are already good. Then we balance the O's by adding water. And since we had four O's to balance the O's, we need four waters on the right. Next we would balance the H's by adding H pluses. And in order to do that, we're going to have to, since we had four waters on the right, we're going to have to add four, or I'm sorry, eight H pluses on the left. So to balance our hydrogen, we add eight H pluses on the left. Remember, the key is balance O's by adding water, balance H's by adding H plus. Now at this point, we're ready to balance our charge. And remember, we need to get a total charge on each side. I have eight plus ones, that's a positive eight, and one minus one, there's one MnO4. So right now I have a positive seven on the left, and on the right side, I have a positive 2 from the manganese, and the waters are neutral. So what I have is a positive 7 on the left and a positive 2 on the right. So when I go to balance my charge, I'm going to need to get that plus 7. Remember, that's what it was over here. And that plus 2 to be equal to each other. In order to do that, I'm going to add 5 electrons to the left. So if you have to, go through and say, okay, 8 plus 1s, a minus 1. That's going to equal positive 7. And I have a positive 2 and a 0. That's going to equal positive. However you have to do it, make sure you're able to get the total charge because adding electrons is a critical, critical, critical step. Now at this point, we have two balanced half reactions. Now we have to balance the electron transfer. The top reaction is going to provide us with one electron, but the bottom reaction needs five electrons to occur. So that means we need to multiply the top reaction by five. So if we have five Fe2 pluses making five Fe3 pluses and we are releasing five electrons, now I have a balanced electron transfer and I can put the two half reactions together. So once we balanced our electron transfer, we add the two together and remember the next step would be cancel. Now since I have five electrons on each side, they're gonna be gone, so I cancel those out. I have eight H pluses on the left. Um, none of those are on the right, so this I need to keep, so that's gone. I have one MnO4, nothing there, so I gotta keep that. Five, I gotta keep that. I need to keep that, I need to keep that, I need to keep that. All those things are gonna end up in our final balanced equation. And that ends our notes over the next section of the textbook.